Hey, y'all. This is Gretchen from Always a Lessons Empowering Educators podcast. I'm a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts, but make sure you check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com and get ready because the learning begins in three, two, one. Magicians, Dr. Sam Fessich here with another episode of the Edgy Magic Podcast, the podcast that is designed to help you become an educator of excellence during your college career. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin when you walk across the stage of graduation, but instead, teaching begins during your first college class at 8 a.m. So, let's get the party started. This is Chris Nessie, founder of the Education Podcast Network. ISD 2019 is right around the corner, and we're hosting an Education Podcast Network meetup. Come out on Sunday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. at Pat's King of Stakes and meet all your favorite Education Podcast Network podcasters and connect with other listeners. We're going to have an old-fashioned cheesesteak challenge. We're going to eat at Pat's. We're going to eat at Geno's. We're going to have a good time talk podcasting and we'd love to see you there come out on june 23rd at 6 p.m if you're going to be in philly for isti 2019 i look forward to seeing you there now back to the podcast all right good morning everyone i'm sitting here with my hot cup of tea and i am ready to go with our conversation with an amazing edu magician dana ewing and i was had the honor of working with dana last year during the spring semester and we worked with ed tech together and it's been awesome getting to know her so i can't wait for all of you to get to know her as well before we jump into our conversation dana can you tell us a little bit about your teaching story Of course. So I'm very excited to join Dr. Fessich on this podcast. I have always wanted to be a teacher. It's just in my blood, and I've known it since I was a little girl. It's been in my family. I have multiple aunts and my grandma, actually both of my grandmas, taught in schools, so they would always bring home books for us to read. My mom encouraged reading every night, and my sister and I would play school constantly with American Girl Dolls, Then we started receiving opportunities in our church to teach kids there. So I got to form lesson plans for VBS and teach them. And it just filled me with so much joy. So in high school, I decided to join the preschool program. And that is where it really took off. And I just knew that I was meant to do it because we were assigned preschoolers and we got to teach big group lessons. But we were also given each of the students were given one or two preschoolers to work with individually. And so I got to see the individual growth of students from that and see how students can progress. And I just loved it so much and want every kid to receive the opportunity to learn and to love learning. I think it's so important to have those early teaching experiences through vacation Bible school or Sunday school. I love this preschool program that you're talking about. When you think back to those early teaching experiences, was there anything that you experienced where you were like, oh, yes, I am meant to be a teacher? <laughs> I think any time that I get to do an episodic lesson or those aha moments, I think you talk about it in your Edu Magic book with Megapixels. Um, anytime you get to do something special like that, It's really the aha moment because you get to see kids connect the information to something in their outside world. I think one of the things that I noticed in preschool a lot was any time that I made my lessons centered around the kids' interests, they would really respond to it. I had a preschooler who loved polar bears out of all animals, and she talked about polar bears constantly. And so I brought in this um, snow that I had had. It was fake snow that we had had in our house for years and never used it. And you put water in it and it feels like real snow, but you can preserve it and it stays like that. And brought it in and she learned how to write her letters in the snow and she thought it was the best thing ever. She kept talking about her magical polar bear snow. So seeing how quickly that can switch just because you tie it to the student. I think that was a really cool moment. Right. 
getting to know them, building that relationship. I love that. Who wouldn't love writing in the snow? All right. So let's, you talked a little bit about some of those early teaching experiences, but I want to learn a little bit more about your why. I think it's so important for pre-service teachers, future educators to focus in on that why, because sometimes in college, it's a little hard to remember why we're here, why we're studying. So why do you want to be an educator of excellence? Well, I am a person who is very deep in her thoughts and very perceptive of other people's feelings. And I have always been very concerned with how others are feeling. I think my compassion is one of my most identifiable traits about me. And so I care deeply about how people feel about school and their life and what's going on in their life. And I really want every child to understand that he or she is worthy of an education and worthy of success in the world. I think that this understanding starts in a classroom because children are taught to think for themselves and they can establish their own values and beliefs based on the wisdom that they gather from the classroom. And I think it's important to have a teacher role model to instill that sense of self-worth. And so I want to be that for students. Oh, absolutely. I love that. I love how you're talking about having the students know that they are valued, they are loved, they have their own ideas, they have their own beliefs, and to really hold those up in esteem, that's excellent. And that can really be done in the classroom by providing students with choice and voice. No matter what grade or subject area you teach, there's always a way to include students' choices in assignments or choices in reading texts or projects or something like that, and allowing them to have a voice in that classroom because it is that shared space with you and your students. They should be a part of that and have that in that classroom, that culture and that respect of rapport in the classroom is so important. Thank you, Dana. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I just think students are so much more brilliant than some people give them credit for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And I, I love how you're tapping into shining a light on their brilliance and their ideas. So let's talk about your favorite educational quote. Is there a, do you have a favorite quote that inspires you or that informs your teaching in any way? I think one of the big things that I have learned over the span of my years has been that teaching involves so much more than just relaying information to students. It's about empowering them to see themselves as people who can change the world, to see the vitality, see the energy that they can bring and all the contributions they can bring. Now, when you talk about teaching is so much more than just relaying information, what does teaching mean to you? I would say teaching means showing students how to think for themselves. So allowing them in the classroom to struggle a little bit sometimes. I know as a student myself growing up, I always wanted the answers right there. And I got really impatient and really frustrated sometimes whenever we would have assignments I remember in geometry class, we had assignments where we had to create projects out of different shapes and it wouldn't always work. And we would have to go back and continue going back and fixing things. And even though I was frustrated in the moment, it gave me important problem solving skills. So I think teaching involves allowing students to struggle so that they can become better learners. That reminds me so much of those four C's that we talk about, the problem, the critical thinking to go along with the problem solving, providing real world problems for students to think out and puzzle with is so important because that brings them into that collaboration and that connecting with others within their classroom. Again, going back to that classroom of respect and rapport, that culture for learning and really valuing their, their choice and voice in the classroom. We're going to move on to our favorite teaching moment, which I am really excited to hear about because you already started off with some awesome snow. So I can't wait to hear what your favorite teaching moment is. Of course. Yeah, it kind of goes along with that. Really anything in that year of preschool was eye-opening for me. Those two students, I had that little girl who loved polar bears. And I also had another little girl who was very quiet and very shy. And so whenever we were assigned the preschoolers, We had one preschool, I had one preschooler in the fall semester of senior year of high school who I was really close with. And then we had to switch and I got these two new ones. I was wondering how I would be able to get the messages across to them and how I would be able to cater the lessons to their needs when I didn't really know much about them. And it was kind of hard to get information out of them. But I started to pick up on both of the girls would always go over to the corner where they would see the stuffed animals in the play area. And I realized that they both really love animals. Like, of course, the one girl loved polar bears, but the other girl loved dogs, especially. And they would always talk about animals. Whenever my lessons weren't getting through to them, I decided one day to allow them to bring in 
their favorite stuffed animal from home. And they told me ahead of time what it would be so I could prepare. But I knew there was going to be a dog and a polar bear. And so I went home that night. We were learning about the alphabet a lot. So I put the uppercase and lowercase letters on matching treats for each of their animals. So for instance, dog, I like got a clip art picture of a dog biscuit and one biscuit would have a capital A and then the next biscuit would have a lowercase a. And they would have to play like a matching memory game. And once they got a match, they'd be able to feed their stuffed animals with those treats. And it was the best thing to watch. They were so excited. And we got through the material so well. Like I just saw the improvement. And I think the look in the kids' eyes is what I always remember. So Mm -hmm. I think that's probably my favorite teaching moment. Now, you talk a lot about the teaching moments that you've had in high school. Have you had any during your college career yet? I have visited many schools and gotten to teach a little bit. I think my most impactful one was whenever I visited my old elementary school, and they allowed me to work with multiple students of varying needs. I got to teach math to a student who has other health impairments. He has asthma. He has multiple physical health conditions that impede his learning a lot. And... So I got to work with him and we were learning about time and I learned that he was very fascinated with lights. And that was something that if you could tie that in somehow to the lesson, then he would really like respond to it. So I took highlighters and we were focusing on like the difference in colors to learn about the different clock hands and learning how to tell time that way. And I learned through that, that he's really good at memorization whenever he can see things visually. It's cool to see whenever you're working with students how if you figure out one thing that they can do really well and starts unlocking more and more that they can do as you go along and you can see the skills building as you're teaching them. That's an excellent way to differentiate that instruction as well. I mean, that's such a that's such an easy fix to do for a lesson. Add in some highlighters and be able to have them show what they know in a different Mm -hmm. way. Nice job. Thank you. Awesome. Very creative thinking. And that's good thinking on your feet too. And I think that's a lot of what teaching includes as well is flexibility and being able to adapt in the moment uh, for students and their needs. Which topic would you like to talk about today and how you use EduMagic in your college oh, career? Well, I think I've already kind of referenced this a little bit. I love the chapter on megapixels because that has always been my thing. I love creating lessons like that and sprinkling my magic. <laughs> so. I would love to talk about that more. Absolutely. Please do. All right. Well, I have always been the type of student where I want to go above and beyond for an assignment. I can never just do what's listed on the sheet. I have to make it creative somehow. (laughs) I just have to go above and beyond. And so I in the same way as a teacher, I, I want to go above and beyond and make the lessons creative. So I just learned about cool tech tools that I can use this year in the classroom. So I'm very excited to try, especially breakout EDU, whether that's digital or the actual breakout box. I think it's so cool to see how you can tie in different types of learning or different ways to solve a problem. And it all comes together with a prize at the end. I think it has a goal for students to reach and they're learning in an applicable environment. So I'm really excited to use those in the classroom. Um, But in terms of what I've already done, I will always forever reference my preschool class because it was so impactful, taught me so much. One of my most memorable lessons in terms of thinking of megapixels was whenever I had to read a story to the class, and the class was very diverse, this group of students especially, Mm -hmm. but we had some kids who didn't know any letters. We had some kids who were ready for kindergarten, and it was all in one group of students. So Mm -hmm. I remember my book that was chosen was a Dora one. I don't remember the name of it, but it was talking about traveling through the different seasons. And so I created around the preschool room different seasons. So one corner of the room had fake fall leaves everywhere um, from a crafting store. And the kids were able to jump around in the leaves. So like in a different part of the room for winter, they would have they would practice throwing snowballs. And so we had like fake snowballs for the classroom and they would go around to different seasons like that. But at every station, we would have to say, okay, first we did this, second we did this, and they learned about the sequence that way. And I think that because they were able to relate the stuff that they did 
to something in their own lives, it really made a difference. And having those extra materials to work with in the lesson really makes a difference too. Because at the end of the day, all the preschoolers would have to raise their hands and say what they learned. And And that just goes back to the episodic learning and having students be participants in the learning is so critical. That's such a brilliant example. Thank you. Do you have any other stories that you want to share regarding uh, megapixels and how you've really amped up a couple of lessons? I was trying to think of how to make a lesson out of the box once again, and it was a science lesson and we were learning about different landforms. So I decided to do the volcanoes, the traditional where you like have the kids build a volcano. But I thought it'd be cool if each kid could have their own mini one. And I would give them the materials to make the volcano explode if they could answer my questions correctly. So we first learned about the volcanoes. And then I would say, what is the hole in the volcano called? And they'd have to answer correctly, crater. And then I would give them a cup of um, baking soda or whatever they needed. And then they would have to get three questions right to get all their materials. And then their volcano would explode. It was a really cool way to do it, and we got some awesome pictures from it, too, because their faces just light up whenever it happens. That is so creative. So I love how you're assessing them, teaching them, and they're getting to be able to experience their own volcano and learning what the different parts are and all the different materials for that lesson. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was a really, really cool thing to watch. So tell me a little bit about your experience being paired with a virtual co-op this year. Oh, it was one of the best experiences of this year for me. I was definitely hesitant at first whenever I heard we were doing that. Obviously, still excited, but I am not the best with technology all the time. I'm always willing to learn about it, but I just but I got assigned a co-op who is a middle school tech coach in West York area school district. Her name is Missy Halcott, and. She and I just clicked right away. I think we FaceTimed each other for the first time and it took over an hour. Like we were just talking about everything under the sun and I knew it would be a good experience from the start. So I was intimidated because she is a tech coach. She has an extensive knowledge of different types of technology. And I was wondering what I would be able to show her that's new that she didn't already know before. But she showed me that teachers are still learners and many different ways. I think the fact that she gave me many ideas of how I could help and phrasing it like that too showed me that I was so important and I still had a voice in all of this too. So the first thing that she and I worked on together was a Canva poster that we had to make um, to display some content in her classroom. And whenever I asked her, okay, what do you need me to display on this poster? She said, I'm trying to teach my students about how to use a Chromebook and they're, it's not clicking with some of them, but we just got a bunch of new Chromebooks and I would really like them to understand it. I just was so nervous and I was like, okay, I, I will get right on that. And I did not, I went and talked to my sister's roommate was a champion and helped me figure out a lot of things. And I made a Canva poster and ended up being really proud of what I had created for her. So I sent it to her. And whenever I posted it on my Twitter account, I had other teachers commenting saying, can I use this in my classroom too? And that was really cool for me because I realized that having a virtual co-op does not limit your PLN to that person. You can spread it out. Having to apply myself like that taught me that I can't just sit still and teach the stuff that I know. I need to keep working towards learning more too. Absolutely. Teachers are always lead learners and they need to keep learning just as much as their students do because we're pushing our students to learn more and be more. We need to do that as well. Yes, definitely. And I think my co-op was wonderful in helping me learn that too. And she was also very helpful in teaching me how to correct my mistakes and learn from it instead of getting upset at myself. That's such a great lesson to learn. It really is. And she she really just, I can't say enough about her. She's so wonderful. Yeah, she, she really helped me, I think, when we did the digital breakouts because we did those in groups. And my group made a couple mistakes that we didn't realize. And she responded right away and said, hey, so this is what I noticed. And I really appreciated her for that. Absolutely. It's so great to have a mentor that's there to help raise you up. Absolutely. All right. So what is the best advice about teaching that you received and how did you incorporate it into your teaching and learning? Well, whenever I attended 
the conference, you said like I elevating and celebrating effective teachers. And I think what's the second T? Teaching. Teaching. Yeah, that teaching. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Next gen. It's the conference that I actually got to attend with you. Kristen Nan was speaking and I definitely wanted to attend that seminar. Mm-hmm. And so she advised us to take a walk in our students' shoes. And you hear that phrase, I hear that phrase a lot, but I just never really thought about it that much until she spent time talking about it in depth. And I think it was her who she said she did a project where students brought in a shoe yes. and put a slip of paper with their story in it. And so you could really see the diversity in stories and they lined the shoes in the hallway. And so by taking a walk in your students' shoes, I think that you see them as an individual with an important message to share to the world. I think that by taking a walk in your students' shoes, you can see that they have a story. And when you put it in that mindset, you want to add to the story and you want to make it a good ending. It's not just a series of, okay, here they enter grade two and they're learning this. They enter grade three, they're learning this. It's about connecting their learning to everything they've learned before and setting them up for the future. Hey guys, it's Sam. Finding a teaching job can be really tough, and finding the right teaching job for you can be even harder. You know, summer may be hot, but you don't have to sweat. AAEE has you covered. Attend the AAEE Job Fair on Friday, July 26 at the Allegheny Intermediate Unit, just outside of Pittsburgh, to find your perfect match. Districts from around the local area and across the country are ready with jobs to offer. Whether you're looking for your first teaching job or just want to see what options are out there, you'll be sure to make a great connection that you won't regret. You may walk away with a copy of the AAEE Job Search Handbook for Educators. Candidate registration is always free, so go online to aaee.org forward slash summer dash job dash fair now. And now, back to the interview. And can we go back? You talked about ESET2 Next Gen. Can you tell my listeners a little bit about what that conference is and what you took away from it? Absolutely. I would love to. So it is a conference that is unlike the other ones that I attended this year because it's all about pre-service teachers. And so we went there and you're seated with, for dinner, you're seated with pre-service teachers from many different colleges. I didn't have anyone else from Grove City sitting with me. And it really let me talk to people from different schools that might have different experiences, but at the end of the day, we share that common factor of still being in college. And the conference focuses on showing us that we have a voice, no matter how young we are or the amount of experience we have. We still have something important to share with the world, and that's why we're all there to teach. And then the next day, they have seminars where it's all about showing us how we can become more impactful and raise our voices too. So I highly recommend if you ever have the opportunity to go, definitely do so. Absolutely. It's a fantastic conference that has learning, leading, and a little bit of fun tied in as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to get to our fast five. And by fast, they're not fast at all, like time limit wise, but just real quick questions here uh, for the audience to grow and learn together. So who do you recommend other pre-service teachers follow on Twitter or the gram and why? Well, I always want to promote my virtual co-op, so Missy Halcott. So her And she is a co-op who really elevates her students. A lot of times she'll post pictures of the news station that she helps her students run in the school or when they go on a field trip. But I've noticed that it's always praising something that they're doing. And her mindset really is for her students. So I think that she's really inspiring Mm -hmm. to follow. When we talk about ed tech, there's so much out there, but what are you excited about when it comes to using ed tech in field experience or student teaching or even in your future classroom? Oh, well, I mean, I learned so much ed tech that it's hard for, once again, it's hard for me to narrow down. The one tech tool that really stuck out to me because I was so intimidated by it at first, Microsoft Sway. And I don't know why it intimidated me, but I just... It, mm-hmm. it looks, I guess, because whenever the, well, they format it for you, and I didn't realize that at first, the format just looked so professional. And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if I can make it look that nice. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't know if I can have that correct design mindset. But when you start to use it, it's really simple. And you just type the text you want. You can add images right in. It's so easy. 
and they format it for you. And then you put it all together. And by the end, I had created some professional looking documents. So Sway is an excellent tech tool. I highly recommend it for especially presenting information, but you can also put links in there. It's great for breakouts. It's really good for parent communication too, because I think that it sends messages in an, in a way that's easy to read mm -hmm. and I, it's appealing to look at. Absolutely. I love Sway. I, I think it's so easy to use. All you do is pop in your content, you choose like your theme, and then it does everything else for you. All the design work is done. You can embed it. You can link it. I love some Sway. Mm -hmm. It is excellent. It's great. So our next one is what song do I need to add to my Spotify playlist? What song gets you pumped up to teach? Whenever I'm about to teach things, I listen to music that's more calming. Like I'm not like a pump up music person. I love the song Highs and Lows by Hillsong Young and Free. And it's just talking about how no matter what happens, like it's going to be okay. And I think it prepares me in the right mindset because teaching, you can prepare a lesson all you want, mm -hmm. but it's going to be different when you're out. You never know what surprises might come up or what direction the conversations might take with your students. So I think that that song kind of keeps me grounded and knowing that life can get crazy and teaching can get crazy, but at the end of the day, it's okay. And you're doing the right thing if you're focusing on your students. All right. Favorite teaching accessory. What can we find in your teacher bag? Oh my gosh. I love colored pens. I have literally every color of Papermate Ink Joy that you could imagine. And I color code everything from my calendar to my agenda, my homework for the day in college. I color code my lesson plans. I, I do everything with my colored pens. So you will never find me without those colored pens. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I think every elementary teacher would totally, I think you have a lot of people agreeing with you on that one with their flare pens, their enjoy pens, all the colors, everything. Oh, yes. yes. Well, Excellent. you have to stay organized somehow. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And it just adds a little brightness to your life for sure. <laughs> All right, and we're getting to the end here. What are you binge watching on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, any other streaming service that I may not know about? What are you watching? <laughs> oh, well, I am a big emotional drama TV series person. So I am right now watching Grey's Anatomy and This Is Us. Dana, thank you so much for your time today. How can people find you online when they want to connect with you? I have a Twitter account and an Instagram account. And both of them are the same handle. So it's all lowercase letters, miss underscore Ewing underscore edu. And then I also have a website and it is dmewing.weebly.com. Thank you so much for your time today. And I can't wait for my listeners to connect with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. There you have it, friends. Remember that you have the edgy magic within you. I need you in my professional learning network, so please make sure that you subscribe and share all that you are learning and doing in and out of the classroom with hashtag edgymagic. Until then, I'll see you next time.